Oh my gosh, you guys, I have to tell you, I am finding so many new records on FamilySearch in their experimental lab site that I had to stop everything and record this video so that you too can get uh, some benefit out of this new website. Now, I'm going to show you how to find it and step-by-step -step instructions on how to use it right here in this video. So let's recap. Family Search announced at Roots Tech 2024, in case you're watching this in future years, a few weeks ago, they announced this experimental full text search website. And I have been really impressed with the amount of records that I've been finding that I never found before. Now they're taking these typed and handwritten documents and running it through this new AI technology to help transcribe unindexed or maybe lightly indexed records. This is huge. Now I heard that 60% of records at Family Search are not easily found in search. So just to help you out, there is a handout for this episode. This is for the Genealogy TV Academy members, the Patreon Happy Dance level members, the YouTube channel members here on YouTube uh, at the information access level, and you can find it at genealogytv.org if you want to follow along. Now currently these records are only US land and probate records and Mexico notary records. This is beta, this is an experiment, and well, let's just get started. Okay, to find this website, you're not gonna find it on the Family Search website. You need to go to uh, familysearch.org forward slash labs, and this will take you here. Now, you're gonna need to sign into your Family Search. Um, account in order to access this page. So if you don't have a family search account, oh my gosh, you're missing out. Please sign up. It is free and uh, it is some of the best records in the world. All right. So once you're there, this very first box, it says expand your search with full text search. Now I've already turned it on. You will probably see something that says turn on, click that button and then go to the experiment. Once there, you're going to get this screen. Now I imagine they're going to update this, but uh, as a reminder, U.S. land and probate records and Mexico notary records are currently available. So make sure that you're paying attention to that because if you're looking for a marriage record, you probably won't find it. You might find evidence of a marriage like in a probate record or a land deed where it says uh, Benjamin Garrett and his wife Sarah. That's evidence of a marriage, even though it's not a marriage certificate. Now, one last thing before we get started is to bookmark this page because you can't find it. So hit that little star and save it. And now you've got it uh, bookmarked. If you're using Chrome, that's how you bookmark it. But let's start with a search. So we're going to search for one of my ancestors. Let me show you over on Ancestry, where I keep most of my stuff. Uh, is Samuel Ferguson. He was born in 1744 and he died in 1825. So let's see. There is uh, probate records as part of this search. So let's see if we can find Samuel Ferguson in this record. Now that alone, there's going to be a lot of Samuel Ferguson's, right? So we might want to give it some more detail. So let's give it Let's see, he was in Cable County, West Virginia. I'm just going to copy this. Let's see if I can do that. Control C to copy. And I'm going to say plus Cable County, West Virginia. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's not quite working for me. So let's, let's change this up a little bit. Let's go and put Samuel Ferguson here in the name field and see if we get any better search because we're getting all kinds of different people. And so let's try this. All right, we're still getting a lot of Fergusons. Here's Samuel Ferguson. So this might be something we want to look at, but if we go and put quotes around Samuel Ferguson, that should theoretically give us every record that has Samuel and Ferguson together as a unit, if you will, in its search. Cable County, Samuel Ferguson, Samuel Ferguson, Cable County, West Virginia. So now we're getting somewhere. Now we could do something different as well. And if you'll notice, there's 70 million record results here. Now, what we could do is we could go, all right, he died, let's see, he died again in 1825. So if we wanted to go record year and we go 1800s, 
And I'm just going to leave this alone and I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to actually remove the Cable County here. I'm going to change this to legal and I'm going to say record place United States because see I'm still at 45,000 results. And I'm going to say, let's see, he was in, was he in Virginia or West Virginia? He was, he died in, hold on a second, Wayne County, West Virginia. So let's go West Virginia. Where are you? There you are. West Virginia, Cable County, and hit apply. And now we're starting to narrow our results to 21,000. We can continue to play with this. We could add some modifiers say what was his wife's name what was his wife mary so we could say plus mary and see if that works we got down to six thousand results samuel ferguson and mary his wife so this is good this is 1813 this is before he passes away this is something i'm going to want to look at so i'm going to right click and i'm going to open a new tab because i don't want to lose my my search here and i'm going to go take a look at this record and I can tell already that this is probably him. Now look at how faint this is, but yet the transcription over here still managed to capture it. So did you catch what I did there? There were two things that kind of were taking me down a rabbit hole that I didn't want to go down. First of all, this record here is a deed. It has nothing to do with the death. We were looking for a death record, but that's okay. Open in a new tab, have fun. I tell you what, I was having so much fun. I was finding so many records. One of the things that you're going to notice, though, look at this. First of all, they're spelling the name differently in this record. They repeat the surname like three times, if you'll notice. Ferguson, Ferguson, and Ferguson up here. You got to deal with it because it's an experiment. It's in beta. They're still developing it, but you can start to use it. And if you'll notice, we even start with the page number at the top of the page, which is way up here somewhere, 244, see? And it transcribes or attempts to transcribe the entire page. Now this happens to be a typewritten page. It is super faint, but it's still picking it up. Details that we might not even be able to see, it is managing to catch. So I'm gonna go back over here. The other thing that I was mentioning was that it's easy to go down these rabbit holes. These are deeds and I'm looking for a death record. So let's continue to see if we can find something that is related to his death, specifically a probate record. Since it's probate and land records that are in these records, we want to see if we can narrow this down a little bit. So we could take a look at, let's see, what do we got? We got record type. I thought I had picked legal already. Let's try that because, you know, probate records are usually handled in the courts. So it may be that we just have to continue to filter down. So we picked 1800 earlier and he died in 1825. So let's try 1820. So we have 155 records here. Will book 1825. Bingo. This is it. His wife, Mary. All right. So now we can right click and open a new tab. Now we found what our research question was, was let's try and find some information about Samuel Ferguson and any death records that we can find. So spoiler alert, I've already looked at this. This is fascinating to me that this technology can read this handwriting. You know, some of us can't read this handwriting, although this one's pretty clear. In the county of Cable, state of Virginia. So that's the other trick that I was going to suggest that I said I, I missed two things there and the other one was I was searching in the state of West Virginia and while Virginia is a word in West Virginia it found it but pay attention to when these um, states were formed because he dies in 1825 and West Virginia is not born until I think it's 1867. It was right toward the 1865, somewhere in there. It was right toward the end of the Civil War. So long story short, it could have been in Virginia or West Virginia in those records. So just be mindful of that. Okay, now before we go away, I want to point out a couple things. First of all, Samuel Ferguson was a slave owner. And in this document, it talks about how he is going to free, upon his death and the death of his wife, he's going to free 
these enslaved persons. And you can find that in here, but it might be a strategy for those of you who are looking for enslaved to look for the first name by doing that search, that keyword search over here. You could do plus Molly, for example. Molly is mentioned in this record as an enslaved person. So that might be a strategy for those who are looking for those enslaved persons to search the enslaver and the first name or the first name of the enslaved person and the words deed or the location that you think that person is in. And you may be able to find records that have, here's Molly right here. It's, it's, it's noted here in the transcript. So if it's in the transcript, it's searchable. And so that might be a helpful tip. Okay. We found the record. Now let's save it. There's several things you can do here. So there's a couple, couple different things. So here we've got a download arrow that is blue. You've also got a download arrow here. So if we click this down at download arrow, it's going to automatically save. Oh, it saved it as a JPEG. Look at that. Sometimes it saves it as a JPEG and sometimes it saves it as a PDF. And it doesn't seem to have a rhyme or reason why, because when I did this before, it didn't want to save it uh, as a uh, JPEG. So save as and save it wherever you're going to save it. So now we have that version as a JPEG. If you come over to the blue arrow, we get choices. So we can include the record with the image with the highlights in it, or we can turn those off and uh, include the record with no highlights, or we can say, don't include the record. I personally like to include the record without highlights. That's just me. You can also include the transcript. That's this over here. Now the transcripts are not perfect. I promise you they need a little editing, but boy, it saves a lot of typing. So what you can do is you can hit download. And as soon as it downloads, it comes in as a PDF. And as you can see here, there's our image and the transcript. Okay, now it needs formatting. It needs to be cleaned up because it says, uh, you know, a lot of times some of these transcripts, I'm seeing his name printed three times. I've had to fix it. But the cool part is it's here. And if you have a document reader, of course, you want to download it again because right now it is just uh, in my transcript. So I want to be able to save that to where I want to save it. And I can do that by clicking on uh, my genealogy archives. I would then go to Ferguson. Ferguson, where are you? And then I would go to Samuel and I would save this as Ferguson Samuel. And I would go ahead and label what the item is and the year. Now back here on the Family Search website where we found this record, if we hit this group data, you can see this, this little arrow up here. You hit this group data you get details about this record. If we're lucky, there might be a source citation down at the bottom. You also have the image group number. So I would take this little hyperlink here and copy to the clipboard and then paste that wherever needed as I'm saving my documents. Please make sure you put it in your research notes. You might even want to grab this URL up here. So for those of us who are on Ancestry and we want to capture that URL, I'm going to control C to copy, and then I'm going to go over to my Ancestry uh, website and I'm going to click add a web link and I'm going to paste that web link in here and I'm going to say, you know, what this is and save it. So I say, uh, this is a will for Samuel Ferguson and I hit add. And now when I scroll to the bottom, you will see that the will for Samuel Ferguson is here and it's a family search website. Okay. And the final step that we want to do is we want to attach this document to our ancestor on the family search tree. And we simply do that by clicking attach to our ancestor and we give it a title and we can put all the names of the people that are in the document. And here I have added all of the people that I could see in here. And then we can actually show the metadata. This is another place you might be able to find and copy the source citation. And then we hit next at the bottom and then we can attach other people to this we can also jump over to 
our family tree and look up the ID number of his wife. Here is Mary, his wife. I can copy that ID number and come back over and paste that in here and hit search and add her and hit next. And it says I've selected Mary and I'm not going to go into the reason right now, but then I can attach it to the tree. And it says the source attached to Mary as well. This is cool. So we can go view the source if we want in her tree and we're in the sources. And here it is right here. We can open that up. We can see more details. We can follow the web link. This is truly some incredible technology that Family Search has come out with, with this full text searching. Uh, this is going to be a game changer. This is going to allow us to research those records that are unindexed or minimally indexed to find words and key phrases that may help us narrow down our results to find the records that we are looking for. Kudos to Family Search. This is truly amazing. And uh, as a reminder, there is a handout for this with all of the instructions that we talked about in this video. Again, that's for the channel members here on the YouTube channel for the information access level, the Patreon members, the Academy members. So uh, make sure you're signed up with one of those or you can find it at genealogytv.org. Also consider joining the Academy because all of these videos and the handouts are in the Academy commercial free. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.